One of the advantages of Microsoft Fabric is the ability to connect with the SQL endpoint using several tools, including Power BI Desktop. In this video, I'm going to show you quickly how to ingest the business data into your lakehouse and then connect with this using Power BI. There are many options to connect to it in Power BI Desktop, but we will explore the SQL endpoint as well as Microsoft Fabric Hub. Let's get started. To demonstrate this, let us ingest data into our lake house. I'm right here in my workspace, the ABC of Metro Fabric, Learning Fabric is the workspace name. You could also go to your lake house and directly ingest data from there. But from this workspace, I'm going to click on new right here and let's use the data flow gen tool to ingest data. The data we are using right here is the link to that data is in the video description. It's a business data that I've once used for data science project in the past on my YouTube channel. And I'm going to ingest the data here. It's an exec file which has also been uploaded to my environment, the account I'm using right here. So if you download the data, you have to click on upload file and locate where it is. But because I already have it in a folder, I'm going to click on browse OneDrive and locate the folder where that file is. For me, it's inside apps and under Microsoft Power Query, anytime you try to upload data from your you know, computer, it get uploaded in a folder. And this is the folder that you can locate it, uploaded files, and I'm going to see business data, which was uploaded quite some time, a minute ago, seven minutes ago. I will select it and yep, click select. So it's going to use my already existing credential, which is for the Microsoft account I'm using. Then I'm going to click next. As expected, it pop up this window and asks me to select in case we have several tables there, you have to select the one you're interested in. This is the one I'm interested in, which I've selected it right now. I'm going to click create. Clicking on create opens this Power Query, you know, environment where I can manipulate my data. And by default at the right hand side, you see some manipulation has been done. The advantage of this data flow gen tool is you can write back your, you know, uh, transformation into a data source. In Power BI Desktop, whatever you do in Power Query, you can't even ingest it back to a data source. It gets saved in your Power BI data set. And I just need to change the customer ID because it's not number. I cannot add, I cannot divide, I cannot multiply them. So I will change it back to text and replace the current you know, data type change that has taken place here. I'm not doing much of transformation now. I just want to ingest this data. So I'm going to click on the destination either by clicking add destination here or even using the button at the bottom right here. When I click on this button, I can also select where I actually want to uh, ingest. It's going to be my data lake. Then it's by default, use the already signed in credential to create a connection for you. And say, okay, you proceed. It is time to select where my data is going to be stored. So I have Learning Fabric, which is the workspace. I have all these workspaces and Fabric Pratica is the lake house. So it's a new table and I'm okay with the name business data. I'm going to click next. By default, it will show me this asking if I want to append or I want to replace because the new table is going to be on replace and it has created destination columns, which you match up with what I've already, you know, have here and it's using data type on the power query. So if you change, you want to change data type, you can change it within the power query and it's going to also, that will determine the column to be created. Awesome. So I'm going to click on save settings. The moment I save settings, it will create the table technically. And if you try to change the data type, it might, you know, uh, not work that well because you, you've created the table. Okay. Let's go ahead and click save settings and we'll then ingest the data. Since I've added the destination, I don't need to do anything again. I'm okay with this. I can go ahead and click on publish. Immediately I do this, the data flow tool, that's default you know, name that is given to it, and it starts loading. Once it's done loading my data, it will, uh, here, it will start refreshing. Um, I'm gonna give it some few minutes, depending on network speed. Once it's done, we'll go back to our lake house and check this data, then, go on to, you know, our SQL Server Management Studio to interact with this. Few more seconds later, my data is here. So it's showing the top 1000, but we can actually switch here to the SQL endpoint where I can actually write my SQL from here. And it is easy to do this. Come over here and say, New SQL query select top 100. It's going to write the query for me. This is what I have right there. I have top 100. And I can continue to interact with this. We can even count how many records do we have here. That should be about 300,000. I'm going to count how many records we have in the table. So this will actually do the counting for me. 
Oh, you can see we have 300,000 records. So that's awesome. That's good. Okay, it's about the SQL endpoint. How do we then connect to this? When you set this button here within my SQL endpoint, you click on it, then you will see that I can actually connect to this externally from Power BI Desktop or even client tools. Client tools like SQL Server Management Studio. So I'm going to copy the SQL endpoint and start Power BI Desktop. There are several ways to connect your data in Power BI Desktop. And there are three major ways. There is direct import method, there's import method, there's direct query, and there's direct link. Okay, so let's start with the import method, which you can actually connect using the endpoint that we copied by going to import data from SQL Server. You're wondering, oh, SQL Server? Yes, because at the back end, what is powering this is SQL Server. I've pasted right there the endpoint, and you see, you can say import method or direct query. But we know the advantage. When you import the data, uh, it becomes faster when you're using it within Power BI Desktop. Uh, you know, but it's not refreshed, it's not live connected. And when you use the direct query, direct query is connected to it, kind of, you know, live because it's direct connection to the source. When it's being refreshed, it's refreshing, but you don't have the flexibility, the speed that you'll have gotten when data is right there in Power BI data set, which import method we deliver. So they have advantage and disadvantages, but there's another method, which is direct link. We're going to see that shortly. So for example, this method, let's use import method and I click okay or i can even write my query here that will pick up the data that i need directly but let's just say okay what you see right here is very similar to the way we work with power bi when you're importing data it is the import method let me select my lake house which is fab practical fabric and you see all the elements that i have there i can choose um, anime i can choose any of these I can even look ahead, you know, anything. I can pick end of this, but let me pick something that I think is small, which is this view. And I can click on load or transform, you know, and that is the option you have when you are using import method because you can now start transforming your data or loading it. But remember, it's going to be import. When I load, it's going to import the data. You see, it will establish connection, it will evaluate and then import and load the data, ETL. No, we are not even transforming, we are just loading. So it's connecting and it will load everything. That is good, but that is not advantage of using Fabric. Now we've used regular way to connect. In your own option, when you click on import data, it's going to ask you to sign in. You must sign in to the same account that you have your Fabric, uh, that you have access to your Fabric. Now, another option is, let's look, look at the two options that is made available directly from one link up. As you can see at the top here, I have one link up. Uh, if your Power BI desktop is not updated, try to update it. You should have this option now. I'm not sure maybe yours is so many months, several months ago. But when you click on this one link up here, so that is why one link is on that line is like one drive of data. And everything here, you will see data set, you will see data mat, you will see data warehouses, you will see, you know, data lake. That is why you have a lot across all the tenants, across your tenants, different workspaces, you see everything here. No, and they are from different environments. So I, I will click cancel here because I actually want to connect to Lake House. I don't need to go through that stress. You can click on the drop down option here and select where you are connected to directly. I'm connected to Lake House, so I'll click on that option. It will it might prompt you to sign in so, so that you can pick up all the things you have access to for your account. So sign in. And you see it has restricted everything now to all of them. They are all lake houses. And I'm interested in practical fabric. When I click on this option here, you see connect at the bottom, right? When I click on the drop down here, you see two other options. One is connect and the other is connect to SQL endpoint. Now, this is the trick here. Connect here is a live connection. This is the direct link strength. This guy connect automatically to the Power BI, to, no, not to Power BI now, connect automatically to the lake house including the relationship that is defined, the data model that has been built, everything there. So it's fast, it's live, it's speed. So direct link combines the strength of direct query, which have access to data when it refreshes, but might not load fast in terms of, you know, when you are working within the Power BI. And um, the import method, which, you know, is not updated until you refresh, but your data, because it's within that Power BI data set, you cannot get more speed and performance. But direct connection, is doing all these things for you. Why? Because your data model is already done, you know, on in the cloud, in fabric. You've done your warehouse, you built your model, everything there. So speed, you get live connection, you will get speed. But when you connect to SQL endpoint, it's going to create a direct 
So you see, connect directly is a direct query that is going to create to connect to that source. And what does that mean? It means you'll be able to now define your model, to now model your data. Let's use this. For example, if I click on the connect to SQL, it's going to load me the regular way we load. It's going to load and say, oh, which of these data set do you want to work with? Oh, I say, uh, for example, diabetics, you know, drug review, anime. I'm going to remove the drug review. Um, I think, yeah, so that I can have um, diabetes data. Yeah, diabetes data is not plenty. Drug review, I'll remove. I'll add this uh, profile. And you see, I'll be able to transform my data. And that way I can do my modeling and do everything there. You know, that, that, that's the regular way we've been using direct code. It's connected directly, uh, but remember, there's a drawback because data is not imported to Power BI and it comes with some challenges. You know, so I can click on load. You can transform. You see, now it's not asking me, do you want to use import method or use direct query? I'm saying, oh, use direct query for me. So it's going to do direct query. Remember, Vim dimension gender, we've imported that one using import method. For these three now tables, we are using direct query. It's faster. Yeah, yeah, it's faster because connecting live is not importing the data, but it's still not delivering. It's not going to deliver the big win. And the third one that delivers the big win is right here, Lake Houses. So when I click on Lake Houses again, you know, back here, I say practical fabric and use the connect life. So this will load and say, oh, I'm connecting life. I'm connecting life. And don't forget, based on what we've done so far, if you come at the bottom right here, you see storage mode is mixed because it is uh, import and direct that we've used there. But this last one, yeah, do I need all the tables? Yes, I need all of them. I'll click on submit. It's asking that I'm because I'm mixing data from different sources and this data will be exposed to each other in case I want to model them that. Am I being open to the potential risk of data sources being sent to other data sources? I'm going to click OK. You see, it's doing a direct query to Azure Synapse. And all of a sudden, boom, all the data is there. All the data is there. You see, we have dimension two um, and some data because those data already exist, they are there before. So the storage mode is mixed and I can come back here to my model view or the, I've not even created any model. If I create a model for them in Fabric, the model is imported directly. You don't need to be modeling your data. In fact, all the DAX, all the measures you have created in, uh, Fabric, um, in Fabric in Lake House or in the data warehouse, everything is there for you. You don't need to be creating new one here. So that is why the advantages of Data Lake is that one, is connected live to the data that is in Fabric Lake House and all the measures you have created, all the calculations, they're already there. You are not loading them on Power BI in the desktop, but those things have been done. The work has been done already and you're just connecting to them. So your, your visualization is going to come at very, very fast and great speed. Take for example, let's just look at this profile, for example, and um, I'm just going to get profile. I'm not even sure, okay. Uh, I'm clicking on profile here and it's going to create the count and I want, okay, I need count so I can come over here and say, instead of doing summarize, count distance for me. Okay, say 47,000 something, add another data, still from profile, still from profile and this time around, make the data gender, put gender there. So go to just turn it to a chart and we have it right here. I'm going to use this to say, give me the data label, awesome. So we have this, you can continue to do your slides and the work has been done. It's really amazing and interesting.